You've heard me talk before about these cheap, thin clients and how they're a great way to get started with a low-cost home lab. But you're probably asking, can it run Proxmox? And of course it can. And when you can afford one of them for 35 bucks, why not get two more for a $100 three-node high-availability Proxmox cluster? Got my Proxmox flash drive. Let's get Proxmox installed on all these guys. Finished while I was gone, so I just got two more to do. Proxmox installed on all three of these. Now we can set up the software. So here we have our three Proxmox servers. And of course they all have self-signed certificates, so we have to continue logging as root. And we're logging to all of them. Okay, so now we've got PVE1, PVE2, and PVE3. All of these are physical systems that I set up earlier. Now we need to cluster them. So here we'll go to the first one to go data center cluster, create a cluster. And we're going to call this our, I don't know to call it. Okay. And we're going to use that link. Okay. So now we copy the join information, a bunch of Bunch of stuff there. You go over to the other cluster, click data center, cluster, join cluster. We paste it. We want the same trace, and we need the root password for the first node. And then we can join. Okay, so now we lose connection with the node because the node comes up with a different key because it inherits the private key from the first node. Now we can log in again. And now we are part of the cluster. So now we'll join the third node. Okay, we're back. So now we got all three nodes in the cluster. And now that we have a cluster, we can manage the entire cluster from any of the nodes. So we see here, all of them have local storage and local LVM storage. And the local storage is pretty much full because these little thin clients only have 16 gig hard drives. And we've allocated like five of it to the ext4 file system. So in theory, we could create a VM on one of these and migrate it. So let's do that. So just for simplicity, I'm going to add storage to my, my NAS because these guys don't really have storage to speak of. Okay, so now we have a third storage that is shared and is enabled, and that's our NAS, our network attached storage. So we can put anything on the NAS and on each local node we can either use LVM thin for disks and containers or we could use the directory storage for everything else. So now we can go to PVE1 and so notice I'm logged into PVE3 but I can still manage PVE1 from here. So I can manage any of the nodes from any other node in the cluster. And let's create a VM and we'll call it 300 and it's going to be Ubuntu. And we're going to pick a, that's what's a good Ubuntu image, 21.10 desktop. No hard disk. Dual core. So now if I start it, Now it's running. So if we click the console, it should start to show us this VM console, which in our case is a live CD because it doesn't have a hard drive.
So what if I want to migrate this? I can click the Migrate button. Do an online migration to PVE2. Let's go. So the machine is running. So it's copying the 2 gig VM state, which is the RAM of the VM. And it took it a few seconds, and it's done. Now we're on PVE2. And there we go, Ubuntu's starting up. So how about containers? Let's make a, a container too. I'll call it 301. And it's going to be Ubuntu CT. And we'll pick a template. Yeah, Ubuntu. 8 gig disk on the network storage and one CPU and half gig of RAM. DHCP all around because we don't want to mess with that right now. Let's go. Looks like it's creating it on PVE2. It's done. Now we have our Ubuntu VM. Just thinking about life here, but it's running. And we have our container, which is currently not running. So just like VMs, we should be able to migrate the container. But in this case, we can't copy it live. So even though we're using shared storage, it still is going to shut down the VM, which saves it to the shared storage, and then reboot it from the shared storage on a different node. So let's migrate that. So shutting down container 301, volume is on shared storage. So then it's going to connect to the other server and tell it to start it, and it started it. So now the container is running on PVE2. Didn't have to do a whole lot to get there. Now that we have the cluster is working, let's make this a high availability VM. So to make VM300 high availability, we need to add it as a high availability resource. We're going to add 300. Press date started. Add. So now we should be able to shut down this node and it should migrate. So it took the cluster manager a little while, but it eventually did decide that it needed to restart VM300 over here on PVE1. But it didn't do a live migration, it, um, it restarted it. So eventually the cluster manager decided that, P that VM300 had to be restarted because PVE3 was dead. And it did, but because this is a live CD, it didn't transfer the memory from PVE3 to PVE1, it just restarted the VM from its disk. So if we want Proxmox to try to live migrate a node, then we need to change this setting here in Options called HA Settings and Shutdown Policy we can change to Migrate. And when it's Migrate, then when you intentionally shut down a node, like you want to do maintenance, you want to reboot it or whatever, it'll automatically migrate live all of the VMs off of that node before it shuts it down. Now that PVE3 is booted back up and we have changed the cluster HA option to migrate, let's see what happens if we try to shut down PVE1. So I click shutdown button. It should attempt to migrate live to PVE, well, either 2 or 3. So this is a live install, so we're running a live desktop. So if it doesn't migrate live, we'll know it because it'll come back up in the installer. There it goes, VM300 migrate. So it's got the little thing next to it that says it's locked and being migrated. Don't know which node we're going to, though. It has picked PV2. Oh, not a bad choice. There we go, now it's on PV2 getting restored. And it is restored. So it did a live migration when we attempted to do an orderly shutdown of PV1. So PV1 should be able to do a complete shutdown now. Eventually it should drop off. Actually I'm connected to PV1, so it's probably dropped off now. Try logging into PV2. So you see PV2's got both of these running. PV1 should should drop off soon. There it is, so it shut down. So that in that case, when we attempted to do an orderly shutdown of PV1 to do maintenance or whatever we wanted, it moved all of our VMs off of them live. So the VM kept running.
and we can see here because it's a live CD we still have the desktop it didn't take us back to the installer so here we have the M300 again running on PVE1 and what happens if we just unplug PVE1 so it completely goes away so our VM is a is a live CD so it's got my website open here so if it somehow manages to do a live migration and the website should come up but if it doesn't we're going to end up in the Ubuntu installer which means that the VM has rebooted so now the cluster has realized that this node could be dead but it's giving it a, a few minutes in this case usually it takes three minutes for it to decide that a node is dead now it has fenced this, which means that it think it's pretty sure that the node it was on is dead, and it's going to migrate it. So here it goes. It's decided it's going to move it to PVE2, and it's starting it. So there it goes. It started it. But because it wasn't able to save the memory, because it didn't realize that PVE1 was going to die so suddenly, we're back at the install screen, which means the VM rebooted from disk because it's a live CD, it's not actually installed on disk. So do I recommend you go out and buy $100 worth of these things to build a Proxmox cluster with high availability? Probably not. Uh, if you're actually wanting to run services in your home lab, they'll function for that. You'll get high availability, you'll get VMs that migrate themselves, you'll get VMs that restart when nodes die or whatever. But the more important thing to learn here is that this setup for $100 lets us learn about Proxmox clustering and Proxmox high availability. And that's beneficial on its own if you want to learn about how to do this, you want to get started in your home lab. So that's what I think this setup is really useful for, is, is learning about high availability, learning about clustering, and getting it working on a small scale. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please consider liking and subscribing so YouTube can recommend more from me in the future.